looking for and yes that <laughs> and we'll be sharing some of the links to documents in the chat so keep an eye out for that if you want them and let's see let's just briefly check that we have i guess christine we know that not all teams are here right so we'll well, we assume some teams are not here. Right. I would still like to know which teams are accounted for currently. That's fair. Um, um, do we want to have them raise their hands or speak up in chat or speak up in voice? Um, hands is probably easiest to track, but whatever works for you. Just a reminder um, to get the raised hands. That's uh, you need to go down to the bottom in participants. Uh, and then there'll be a long list of participants on the side. At the very bottom, on the right-hand side, there's a raise hand feature. Uh, and you will have to lower your hand um, when it is not your turn. Uh, so we have 3491 fix it. Yes. 15013 friction. I know you're here. Um, parabellum. And Guild of Builders, great. Um, Aimbot Robotics, I don't see you. Oh no, there you are. No, you're fix it. <laughs> Do we have Aimbot? Joel, put your hand down. Uh, okay, it's St. Pat's Incline Robotics. Okay, and Celtic Silverfish. Great, and Mark. Guess not. Uh, KP Timberwolves. You seem to also have more Timberwolves. How about Technodynamics? <laughs> Lightning bots. Uh, we're here. Okay, great. Um, light, are you Lightning bots that are here? Yeah. Great. Reynolds Raybots? No Raybots. Dudley's Troopers? No. Uh, St. Pat's Marlowe's Machine? Okay, great. And Reynolds Robo Runners? Okay, uh, sorry, I didn't catch that. Are there Robo Runners here? I don't believe like the Robo not. Runners are not here, but Forces and No Ones are here. Great. Uh, we just missed them accidentally, but that's oh, sorry about that. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, so first of all, schedule for the event driver's meeting, you are here. So over the course of the next few days, we'll be asking you to submit your match scores and your photo and videos for the live stream, which we'll come back to what exactly that looks like shortly. But we want you to get both of those in by 6 p.m. on Saturday. And then on Sunday at 7, we will be presenting a live stream with the event results and with the photos and videos you've submitted about your team and your robot and what you've been up to this season. We're trying to capture a bit of that excitement of the live event with everyone seeing each other's robots and getting to know each other. So please do send us a robot and team photo and a video of your robot doing something or your team talking about your robot or in that general space, really whatever you want to share with us. Um, I'd like to kick things off with a brief video about first core's value of gracious professionalism. Kyle, we don't hear the audio. Uh, okay, attempt to fix that. Thank you. Um, all right. Sometimes it has to be during the share screen, sometimes. I think I'm doing that, but maybe I'm doing it wrong. Um, sorry about this, everyone. Oh, sh I'm sharing the.
full monitor at the moment. Is that not what I should be doing, Kat? Um, sorry, I'm hearing Christine giving directions and she is muting herself. Click on the little slider bar that the speaker near the slider bar at the bottom of the video and just make sure it doesn't say muted. It does not. I can hear the audio. Yeah, but it might be muted on your slideshow. Often reshare and you share. Okay. Sometimes there's a choice, a tick box to share computer audio. Okay. In Zoom, that's what you get. I don't know if it's. Okay, let's try this again. Can you hear the audio now? Yes, we do. Hi, I'm Woody Flowers, and I've been part of FIRST for a long time. I really love how FIRST helps us learn that working hard can be fun and profoundly satisfying. In FIRST, we do our best work while helping others and treating folks with respect and kindness. This ethos is something I like to call gracious professionalism. As you go through this first season, please remember that it is extremely important. In fact, it's expected that you practice gracious professionalism. Everyone, first students, coaches, parents, volunteers too. It's not always easy, but it will make first a sweet experience and it can have a big positive impact in all areas of your life. So go be kind and creative. Okay, so great professionalism as always applies just as much to remote games as it would to a more typical season. But there are some new things that that, new implications of that this year that I'd like to talk briefly about. It says, we're relying on you teams a lot more this year to handle things like inspecting your robots and scoring your own matches. So that means that we need everybody to be creation professional and doing that in an accurate and fair way. So that means things like when you decide to that something is going to be on one of your six official matches you commit to that that is and then you submit the score from whatever happens in that match even if your wheel falls off or something just like you would at one of your six matches at an in-person tournament um it but and It also means that you'll need to watch out for scores and penalties and such. The, all the things that would normally be handled by us referees and inspectors, those are on you now and we're counting on you to do that fairly and effectively. Thank you. Uh, so this is what the remote field will look like, uh, at least in diagram. It's Bit more than half of the standard field. Um, your or your field could look something like this. Um, you'll be playing on whatever works for you, it really. And submitting your scores for your six matches between Tuesday and Saturday, like talked about I'd like to do a brief demo of the scoring software to show you a bit of how that will work and I would really encourage all of you to run a test match before you do your official matches to get familiar with this so I have the scoring software here this is a cloud-based thing on the first website So here you can see, you log into your team dashboard, your 
this will have to be done by one of your two team coaches and you have the option to run test matches or if unlike my test team you are registered in our upcoming event which you all should be you will see your real matches here let's walk through a test match to see what that's going to look like so pre-mats first of all you will get everything set up and you will randomize the field to determine which target zone is active in this step and just a reminder yeah. that your robot should be on the field set up exactly if, if you were playing a match ready to go before randomization click randomization thank you kat exactly and in, in the spirit of grace professionalism we do not want to see say um like treat this as the same as the random roll at the start of an official live match not we're going to keep trying until we get the one target zone position we like or something like that so from here, um, you, you'll be able to show, with the show preview button, a screen just like the timer display from live matches. But we can start the autonomous I'll, period. Yeah. Can we actually stop? Um, in the middle at the top, it says play display sounds. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's do that. I think that gets us the audio. Good plan. Let's do that. Three, two. So it does. One. So during the autonomous period, you'll have the opportunity to enter whatever your robot is doing during that time. You've got your bubble goal delivery, the goal scoring, navigation, penalties. And um, when the autonomous time expires, you will click submit autonomous it's down at the bottom. Wait and let it expire. Yeah, exactly. It won't let me do that before then. Driver, pick up your controller. So just like a live match, Three, you'll have a two, brief interlude to one. pick up your controller. Submit. Submit autonomous. Now you have the same scoring for the live match. Remember to stay on top of this. If there's a lot going on, it can be hard to catch up if you get behind on actually entering what's happening. Um, again, the same set of scoring things you've got for the driver control period in the end game. I'm not going to let this wait out the two minutes, but at the end you'll have, just like before, an opportunity to submit the driver control period, and then you have a chance one last time to review the scores from both periods and make any changes you need to before you submit them. Uh, so just a reminder that there will likely be a sound at the end of at the start of end game. Because um, yes. that's pretty typical of the scoring system. There so. is. And do you want, think we should see that sound, Kat? I personally don't care, but just a reminder to teams if they're listening for that. Right, yes. And so keep in mind, this came up in one of our team meetings today, that the end game specific tasks, so that's the wobble goal off to the start line of the drop zone and the rings on the wobble goal and the power shots are only worth points if they are completed during the end game. So that means, for example, rings that are on a wobble goal at the start of the end game do not count for those points, even if they stay on there until the end of the match. And there's the end game start sound. We might as well just let this finish and see the final review screen. So for those of you who didn't know, this is very similar to what referees have been using when we've been live scoring last year on tablets. Um, so even though it looks a bit funny, um, this is what we have to work with. Um, and it does a lot of the math for you, which is helpful. Good, submit driver controlled. So here we might realize, oh, we scored one more ring than we got counted in the live thing, for example review everything, we're happy with it, submit final scores, and now that is one of your six matches recorded for the tournament, assuming it's not a test match like the one I just did. Let's go back to our slideshow. Here we go. 
So next up, to give you a sense of what a remote match might look like, this is a video that first has asked one of the alumni teams to put together of what, how they would run a remote match. Um, I should mention this is the kind of robot you might expect to see at the end of the season at the World Championships, so don't feel bad at all if your robots don't look like this yet. Uh, also, going back to our earlier discussion about fair play and great professionalism, keep an eye out, see if you can spot, there's a couple of moments in this video where they probably should have called some penalties on themselves. See if you can spot those. Are we playing autonomous or uh, just driver control period? Just driver control, I'm just skipping to it. Okay. So notice they've got their drive team, their human player, and they've got another team member whose leg you can see on the side acting as their scorekeeper. So as a theme this year, that is your job this time when it would normally have been done by field staff. You can hear the end game started and that the human player pushed the power targets forward to make sure that they were ready. Did I see that right that two power shots went back at the same time? You did. That'll be a good discussion point. Yeah. So yes, uh, along with your scores, which... Well, wait a um, sec, don't we want to talk about the video? Yeah, fair enough. Um, yeah, so do you have then, particular things in mind you want to talk about it with it, Christine? Well, actually, first let's ask the students who are out there, did any of you see the penalty moments that Kyle mentioned? Um, you're welcome to unmute. Oh, I think they were touching four rings at one time. Or like the yes, one. exactly. There was a few of those moments. Yeah, and they also like they abused the like walls quite a bit. I'm not sure if that's like considered like um, a penalty worthy offense, but like the walls took some beating. I would say that is allowed. They aren't doing anything here that looked to me like it was getting to the point of risking field damage, which would be where it would be a problem. I mean, that's something to be careful of in a remote match where your walls may not be as sturdy as the official ones you've got here, but it's not against the rules. So talking, so talking about the possession of four rings, Kyle, would we immediately score a penalty on that, or considering the amount of time that the four rings were in control? Yeah, that would be circumstance dependent. It's um, realistically, I probably wouldn't have 
been sure enough to call that the first time it happened, but at the very least, I would have been having a chat with that team after the match that that is something they need to be careful of. And when it keeps recurring like that, the, that would likely be something I would call. I realized another thing rewatching this video. Um, we have a drive team member who is not wearing safety glasses. That is a very good point. They should be doing that, even in a remote match. <laughs> so please uh, do wear your safety gear. Um, I know we're dealing with stuff indoors, um, but ideally you should be wearing closed toed shoes and safety glasses. That is standard fare for working around moving metal parts, no matter what type of discipline you're in. Yeah, very good point. Um, Christina brought up the power targets. Yeah, I'm going to check the game manual on that. I believe that is clever but valid to have hit two of them with one ring. Yeah. Did I, they actually hit two or did two just bounce back? Because the power targets kind of bounce on their own if you hit the bar. That is a good point. Let's see if we can catch that moment. Okay, so they just reset okay. them. But one's already back. No, they oh, just reset it. Yes, it looks like they actually bounced the ring off one and into the other. Oh, I wasn't sure. Okay. They, they, the team member did fully reset them at the beginning, right before the robot was about to, to, to um, shoot at the power targets. So I think that is a valid score of all three of those. Right, yeah. but there is a Q and A that says if the ring hits the bar and it doesn't hit the pow the actual power shot target, it is not scored. Okay, so, so that's something. So when you hit the bar and it vibrates and the power shot flips back, that's not scoring. You actually have to hit the blue section with a ring to flip it back. Okay, that's a good point. That looked to me like they were just barely on the right side of that line there, but definitely something to be aware of. Um, I did just want to double check the possession of rings because the scoring software will only say like, it just says, did you get a minor penalty? Did you get a major penalty? How exactly do teams assess those penalties? Yeah. Possession of rings is a minor penalty per ring over the limit and a major penalty if you score while in that state. Um, again, this is one where we have to rely on teams to know these rules and assess themselves fairly and graciously. Uh, so the other thing for teams who are doing their scoring runs, if you know you have um, done something that is a penalty, but you're not sure exactly how to mark it on the score sheet or something, make good notes about it and then come to um, the virtual question boxes and we will have somebody who can help you work out exactly like whether that's one penalty or two penalties. And even if you've already submitted your scores, as long as we can document it, um, our head scorekeeper can actually go back in and adjust things to correct it. So, you know, if you accidentally assigned yourself three minor penalties and it should only have been two, we can work that out. And that's part of what those time blocks, the virtual question box are for. And your team should have the link to those Ring Central meetings. And as I said, there's one hour on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from 7 to 8 p.m., and one hour on Saturday from 1 to 2 p.m. Thanks, Christine. That's good to know about the scorekeeper. I didn't know that. That will be very helpful. Yeah. Um, there is a question that's been typed in the chat. Oh. What if the power shot gets knocked back by vibration? If we then hit the power shot again and it stays in its knocked back position, can it now be scored? That's an interesting question. Let's take a look at the game manual. 
Kyle, do you want to continue with the meeting and I will check the game manual and Sure, the sounds good. Thank you. Okay, so next up, photo and video submissions for the live stream. So this is something that has come up a couple of times in the team meetings earlier today. Videos are not part of your official score submission. We won't be doing any watching your videos and scoring them ourselves or anything like that. That's all your job. But where the videos are really valuable is in showing the rest of the teams and everyone watching a live stream what you've been up to this season. So we're asking for a robot photo, a team photo, and a short video about yourselves and your robot. That could be one of your matches or a presentation about what, what you've built and why. Yeah, think, think of this as trying to capture a bit of what you get out of meeting and talking to other teams in the tournament and getting to know each other and learn from what you've done. There's a media submission form, which I think Christine will put the link to that in the chat. Again, just like your scores, we'd like to get this in by 6 p.m. on Sunday. Saturday, not Sunday. So, are there any questions? I know there's the one that Kath was looking up. Anything else you'd like to ask us now? Or feel free to email or join the question boxes if you have more questions later. Let's see, there's something in the chat. So that's the link to the media submission form if you haven't already got it. Uh, sorry. If there's like a really big like technical difficulty or Wi-Fi shuts down or something like that, like is it like is it like for the scoring submissions, is it that like if it cuts out, like is that going to be a problem? Okay, so oh. you can use paper score sheets if you like it is possible that the team is actually in a location that doesn't have Wi-Fi. So you can um, there are paper score sheets available on the web um, and maybe we'll manage to get a link, but if not, Google it and you will find the score sheets. And then you could fill them in in paper form and either your own coach could go and submit them later or if you can, um, I would say come to the virtual question box and let us know about it. Again, our head scorekeeper has offered, um, if you scan them, and upload them like to a Google folder or something and give us access to the folder. Our head scorekeeper has said he is willing to actually um, has said he's willing to go through and actually do the um, submission for that team. But we are hoping most of you learn to use the cloud software and do your own online scoring. Mainly because the um, timing is really good. You heard the sound effects when Kyle was demonstrating it. Um, that is definitely going to help your team actually run a match. So there's a real advantage to your team to uh, being able to use the online scoring software. And for the case, which I think you might be asking about, where if your Wi-Fi failed during an online scored match, maybe the power went out or something external to your robot, I think that's another case of let us know what happened and we will do what we can to resolve it fairly with the scorekeeper's ability to go in and edit things. And if anything like that happens, please try to take good notes at the moment it happens. Um, yes. So it would always be a good idea during your scoring matches to have a clipboard and paper handy. Um, I know in this day and age, everybody only has their phones and rarely seems to have a notebook, but please have some paper in that handy for that situation. We do have another question in the chat. Um, I understand that the scorekeeper must be a team member. For our case, we only have two team members in proximity to the robot as we cannot meet due to COVID. Could a coach be a scorekeeper as one team member would be the driver and the other would be the human player as well as the coach? First has actually encouraged that the adults be involved in the scoring. Uh, there certainly is no requirement that the scoring be done by a student team member. Um, they would definitely like an adult to be at least part of the scoring. So 
definitely there is no problem if your adult coach is actually the one recording the score. Okay, I think I have an answer on this. Um, um, I'm actually just going to share a screen so we can I can just show where in the game manual I'm reading this from. Um, if I can do that. I'm working on it. No, I'm good. I just need to actually open this. I was having some trouble with my PDFs. So um, a power shot target is changed from the forward to back directed by direct contact with a launch string uh, to earn points for the team. So going with that phrasing, if it the power target was moved based on vibration from the tube, then um, it would not count. But I agree, this is an unusual situation. Um, it is not currently covered in the q &As. So I would say someone needs to submit a Q&A on that and get that covered officially. Um, but it, it does sound like it does need to be moved forward to back with a ring. Any other game questions for us? Since this is the driver's meeting. Can we talk a little bit more about the option question box periods, period, question box periods that are answering and how teams access those? Oh, um, uh, Liam, do you have a question? Is that what that um, hand is? Yeah, I was just wondering, if a ring gets launched out of the playing field, um, not via the uh, scoring tower, but like just out a different side, can you retrieve it and place it back in play or is it like lost? Checking on that. Uh, the answer is uh, the human player should go pick it up um, and return it via the um, return shoot. Okay, thank you. Um, that said, if you were to launch the ring over a wall other than the back wall with the uh, um, goals by it, that would also be a minor penalty. So in the chat, I just posted a link to the Google Doc that we are using to schedule everything, and it includes all of the Ring Central links. Um, you should be able to, so if you have this document at any time, you should be able to find the link to the current Ring Central meeting. The time slots for the virtual question box are Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 7 to 8 p.m. And then on Saturday, they are from two, uh, 1 to 2 p.m. If we're in the middle of a question at five to one, we're not actually ending it at one o'clock, but it means that the volunteers will not hang around till 1.10. So please try to show up at one o'clock. And if you end up in any difficulty in between, by all means, send me an email. Um, it is likely that you will get a reply from Kyle or somebody who actually knows the answer to your question. But I will certainly make sure that we get you answers to any questions as well as um, we do have access to our FTA and CSA. So those are the people who help you when you're right at the field and something goes wrong with your robot and you can't figure out how to reconnect your phones. We've got access to them as well. So all of our volunteers are still here this year and we all want to see you guys be successful. So don't be afraid to ask for help. Okay. I'm just reading what's going on in the chat here. <laughs> okay, do we have any other questions?
Has anybody done a scoring match yet? <laughs> Is anybody going to do one on Wednesday? <laughs> oh, I see you. Hopefully, that's a good one. Um, Joel, I don't believe you've done a scoring match. We're, I was uh, curious to see whether it was worth going and looking at the submitted scores to see if any teams had already submitted numbers yet. But um, I'm, I gather I can wait till tomorrow before I go and check. And there's lots of time to get them in until Saturday. Don't feel like you have to get them in tomorrow. probably goes without saying, um, but this is League One, and we know that a lot of things happen to robots at League One. Um, there have been times when we have actually stood around a field for the 30 seconds of autonomous and no robot moves because everybody forgot to push the right button. Um, and that's okay. Um, you know, you guys, League One is about giving you an opportunity to make mistakes, to figure stuff out, to learn how to do it better. It's a chance to see what the other robots are doing, as long as you send us video of your robots, and get ideas for what you want to be building towards League Two and League Three and championships. So don't worry too much about what your robot does or doesn't do in your first match. Um, you know, even if you get zero points in your first match, that's okay. Um, just submit your scores, keep going, keep trying, because one thing to remember is that only half of our teams are even going to approach League One. Therefore, you're already ahead of half of the teams in BC just by showing up and submitting some scores you are going to have way more experience than those other teams are going to have by League Two. So we know it's a tough year. We know that every team is struggling with whether they're allowed to meet. Um, you know, this team member one isn't allowed within six feet of team member two, so how do you actually build a single robot? Everybody is facing difficulties that we never even thought of only a year ago. But we know you guys are going to be able to do this. You will find a way, and at the very least, some of us will learn enough that more teams will be successful at League Two. So think of it that way. Don't get discouraged if your first match doesn't go the way you expect. Um, we believe in you, <laughs> and I'm really looking forward to seeing uh, the videos of your robots for the team showcase. Uh, to me, one of the things I look forward to every year is seeing the robots playing on the field together. And even if I can't get to see them play together, I at least want to see them play on their own. So good luck to everybody. Um, I don't think, have we had any more questions come up? I don't see any more. Does anybody else have anything final they'd like to say? I just want to say good luck with your matches, and I'm looking also looking forward to seeing what you come up with this year. Okay, um, I will stop the recording and.